God bless you. You are highly favored in the name of Jesus. You are blessed for watching this video. A, a, a lot of time because of lack of knowledge, because of um, lack of understanding, um, we we find ourselves wanting and then and then to be able to understand clearly of what God is saying or what man is saying we find a little bit difficult to able to differentiate those things but at this very moment I, I, I want us to clearly look at some few things in the Bible which for so many years um, it feels like it, it was a, a character of God whilst it was not so while it was not so while it was not so so if you check I'm um, saying that did God really did God really regretted creating man did God really regretted creating man did God really regretted creating man so we we look at few scriptures for us to be very clear on this which is a very broad topic but I want to treat it um, as in series so just keep following keep following and then I'm sure you'll be blessed in the name of Jesus just keep following and I'm sure you are going to be blessed I pray for you in the name of Jesus I, I pray that the the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God, Christ Himself, who is our knowledge, who is our wisdom, who is our understanding, will be filled in you in all that you do. And I trust that at this few minutes I'm going to spend with you, you are going to be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I personally is so happy to to share with you this very topic this very topic I'm so happy to to share with you so yes come along with me and let's expose Satan because Satan is the one behind all this he is the one behind the mess misunderstanding of the scriptures and things that it, it was man speaking sometimes we feel it's God that is talking you understand we feel it is God that's that is talking but meanwhile it is not God let's go straight straight away straight away let's see what Bible is talking about it did God really regretted creating man? Did God really regretted creating man? Did God, did God really regretted creating man? That's the question. That is the question. Did God really regretted creating man? Because we, we know for sure that people talk about that in the book of um, Genesis chapter 6. Let me read that quickly. Genesis chapter 6. Let me get that thing quickly for all of us to, to know where where we are coming from or where I'm coming from so 6 and then verse 6 say that and the Lord was sorrow that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart now if you read this this verse it should, it should put a lot of a lot of um, Questions in your mind. It should give you. A lot, it should give you a lot of questions. It should. It should. It should tell you that it's if really God is the Father that who said that He loved the world and He gave Himself for the world. If really true, if really true that He said He loved the world, that I see that that particular verse contradicts His nature or His character. 
because he is unchangeable God. This is what I want you to understand. He is unchangeable God. So when you see a place of a change of character, then you should question it. You should question it. You understand? I'm bringing this to our view for us to understand that we ask to question the scriptures. That is why the scriptures is meant for our studies. It's meant for our studies. You get my point. The scriptures is meant for our learning. It's not just it's not just there, you know, it's meant for our studies. So we, we clearly need to understand the scriptures and move on in this life and move on. We clearly need to understand. Clearly need to understand. So in so many occasions I have really heard I have, I have heard that God in some point regretted of creating man by studies. Let me tell you by studies I and getting to the root of scriptures. By studies and getting to the root of scriptures, trust me, you will understand that it is not from God. It is not from God. God never regretted and God has never regretted of creating man. God has never regretted for creating man. That is what I want you to understand. God have never, he has never, and he will never regret for creating man. And he will not regret. There's no way God will ever regret of creating man. So the solution of, of, of and God regretted for what? If God regretted, then the, the act of salvation is even, there's a question mark on it. It should be a question mark because if he has got of creating man, well, then why would he die? That's the question. Why would he die? Because he's unchangeable God. He is unchangeable God. So why would he die? Why would he die? He is unchangeable God. He does not change. And, and mind you, the scriptures was written about Christ. Was written about Jesus Christ. I want to establish that before we move on. Was written about Jesus Christ. If you look at the book of John, John chapter chapter five. Let's go to John chapter five. Let's go to John chapter five and see something brief. John chapter five. John chapter five. And I'm going to read from 20, 39. He said, You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. For in them you will know that you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. Which are they testify of me? You understand? So it, it's saying that. They are talking about him. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. So the scriptures, which is the Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi, which is testifying or talking about Jesus Christ. That's one thing I want you to understand. So since Christ is the express image of God and we are seeing the character of Christ then we clearly can say and boldly bring to light of the scripture saying that God regretted for creating man because it contradicts Christ's character it contradicts Christ's character I'm telling you the truth it contradicts Christ's character so if we study carefully in the book of John, John chapter 1, let's go to John, John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. Let's go to even the, um, um, the common one that we know, 
316 316 the common one that we know let's go to 316 the common one that we know for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life you know someone might may argue that it still means that god regretted at that time but you go back and read the whole scriptures and so that you'll be able to identify if it was really from God. If it was really from God. We, we will see that in, in, in a jiffy. You're going to see that in a jiffy. You're going to see that in a jiffy. If you just if you just join the broadcast, share the link to somebody. Share the link. Let the person also be blessed with this information because did God really rejected or regretted you? That's the question. Did God really regret it? That's the question. That's the question that I want us to think about. That's the question that I want us to look at it. That's the question that I want us to look at so that we will all see God in two perspective, which means that in two dimensions that Today, God is good. Tomorrow, God is bad. No, God is good all the time. He is good all the time. He is unchangeable God. So, God cannot be bad today and be good tomorrow. That God, I will not serve. I will not worship. I will not even testify about him. That God that will do good today and tomorrow do bad, I will not testify about him. Because the, the, the Father that I have, who is the divine God, let me tell you the truth. He has not regretted of creating you and I. I'm telling you, he has not regretted of creating you and I. He, he has not regretted of, of saving us. He has not regretted of giving his, himself to us. He has not regretted. Because so many years, I'm telling you, so many years we, 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 we learn of um, God regretted. As I just read to you in the book of Genesis chapter 6, verse 6. Let me, let me go back to that point again and start reading from, from verse 1. From verse one, and you see something clearly from what um, 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 Moses was really describing. Look at it. Is it now? It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive. The word strive is another thing that we have to look at, but because of time, we'll go into these things. Because as I told you, this is going to run in a series, and a lot of things will come up with man forever. For he is indeed flesh. Listen careful. For he is indeed flesh. The man is flesh. So it is admitted by God that. The flesh has its own behaviors and characters in life. So man is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There was giant on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God came into the, in, in to the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the weakness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil. So it was the man said, Then the Lord saw that the weakness of man was great in the in the, in the air on the in the earth, and that every intent of the daughter thought of his heart was only evil continually and the lord was sorry not sorry because he is sorry of creating man no we should be clear not sorry because he is sorry of creating man that's why we have to be rightly dividing the word of truth he is not sorry because he has created man he is sorry because the heart of man it is the heart of the person he is sorry that he has made man on earth no if, if you're going to tackle the words one after the other, realize the sorry is not like he feel he is feeling like he should have done it. No, because he, he has a motive 
in, in the book of Ephesians said that for he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the earth. So his plan to for man is the salvation. Because if you if you if you look at it, if you it's still talking about regret, it's still talking about repent, comfort, um, regretted, and all that. But if really the question is, if really he regretted, how then from right from the beginning he had a salvation plan for mankind? So if you question all this in your thought, you realize that the character presented in that particular point. Is an error. Their character is an error. So we need to question that character and see who, because Moses was not as no, mind you, let me tell you, let me tell you something. Moses, Moses was not born as a born again person because at that time, before before Christ, no one who anyone who lived was not born again, was not having the spirit of God. In, in, in them living in them as now that we have the spirit of God who is able to let us able to divide the word of truth and bring to light our cherished hearers and cherished viewers who are watching us right now so you, you, sh you should understand that Moses what he was saying that's what he has put there and, and trust me all of you sometimes you might have a dream and then when you get up in the morning even to explain a dream to somebody it's a whole lot of work it's a whole lot of work. It's a whole lot of work. So, what I want us to really be clear about is that God never regretted. And if we see it in, in, in a due time, we're going to see scriptures that shows that God never regretted. God never regretted. And I said, um, the book of John, chapter 5, 39, clearly, clearly telling us what is the book written about the scriptures was written for and the scriptures was written about jesus was written about jesus so if the scriptures is written about jesus for so you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and these are they which testify of me so the scriptures from genesis to malachi are written concerning Jesus and and because it's concerning Jesus and Jesus being the image of God the image of God the express image of God that if you want to see God when you see Jesus you have seen God he told Philip I've been with you for all this while you have not seen the father yes sure as the father Say, I've been with you for all this while. You have not seen the Father. Because I and the Father, we are one. So as long as you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So the character, let, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse, verse um, 15. Deuteronomy 18, verse 15. Quickly. Deuteronomy 18, verse 15. And let's see what is saying 1815 let's look at something he said the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst from your brethren him you shall hear and prophetically we agree to the fact that Jesus it was the one who was promised for man and him only we should listen. That's the key point. Him only, we should listen. So, who do we listen to? Whom do we, whom, whom must we listen to? Jesus. So, if, if you want to, if you want to see God, who do you look at? Jesus. If you want to talk to God, who do you talk to? Jesus. If you want to, if you want to come close to, to God, who do you get to? Jesus. Whom shall you hear? So we don't listen to anybody who will the best only person that we're listening to is Jesus. It's Jesus. Look at the same, the same um, 18, 18. He said, I will raise up for them a prophet like you. 
from among their brethren and I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak to them at all, them all that I command him. So, that is why I say that the words I speak is exactly words that my father speaks of. Do you, do you get a point? So we should be clear and understand that God never regretted for creating man. So we, we can't present God today he regretted for creating man and tomorrow he's the same savior that he came to save. God is 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 at where he was when he created heaven and earth. He's unchangeable God. This is what we have to understand. He is unchangeable God. It doesn't change. And we need to be clear about that. We need to be clear about that. That is why we have to rightly divide the word of truth and understand what the scriptures is saying and understand clearly. Luke 24, 27. Let's, let's read that. Well, let's read more scriptures for, for our own benefit so that we can be clear of um, what the scriptures is saying so that we don't see ourselves struggling of understanding the scriptures and all that. You understand? 24, 27. Let's look at something. 24, 27. Luke 24, 27. You got it. What's it? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expanded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So, beginning, let's say beginning from Moses. For Moses is talking about the scriptures. All the prophets, all the prophets, he never left anyone out of the, the situation. He said, all the prophets, all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So that's why the scriptures, a lot of things in the scriptures, it doesn't even matter. That is not the focus. A lot of things in the scriptures, they are not the focus. The focus is Christ. The focus is Christ. The focus is Christ. That is why um, I'm going to systematically walk us through of understanding the character of God. And for me to be able to deal with the character of God, I'm just bringing your mind on events that has happened in the Bible that people think they ought to tell God's children that your father, the same father that I say he loves you, the same father said one day said that he got a of pretty man. Meanwhile, the same father that he loves us had a plan already. And he has executed it. He pleased himself. Nobody can please God. So he himself pleased himself. Because he knew that we can't please him. So he has to please himself. Look at the second Timothy verse, verse 2 15. He said, be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly dividing the word of truth, is understanding the Torah and the grace of God. It's for you to be clear of the law and the grace of God, which Second Corinthians will let you understand that. The law, in fact, I'm even taking it too far. John chapter 1. When you read down was I think 14, 15, 16 down, so you realize that he said the law came by Moses, but truth, but grace, which is the truth, is not grace and truth. Grace, which is the truth, came by Jesus. Let's let's go there and read. Let's go there and read and read for, for our clarification. Let's go there and read for our clarification. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter Let's go there and clear our mind for our verification. John chapter 1, verse, let me read from 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld it, uh, held his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth does not mean that grace is separate from truth because grace is the truth. So, full of grace, which is the truth. You have to be clear on that. 
full of grace, which is the truth. Full of courage, which is the truth. We need to understand that. Full of courage, which is the truth. When you use um, the word and over there is Kyle, which means grace also truth which means grace also truth so we, we should understand that he, he, he was full of grace which is the truth for the law came through Moses so in other sense Jesus is revealing to us that even the law is of that we have used to tie our head is not from God. God the law came by Moses. But truth, the grace, which is the truth, came by Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the express image of God. And he's telling you that the law came by Moses. But I'm giving you grace, which is the truth. I'm giving you grace, which is the truth. I used to believe before that dividing the word of truth is essential to morality. You know, dividing the word of truth is trying to live well, and tr trying to live well, not to live bad. I, I am not telling you to go and live bad because you have grace, which is the truth upon your life. Of course, when you want to live bad because of grace, of course, you're already in heaven, but because of grace, you want to live bad, it's up to you. Whatever consequences that come is your life. But let me tell you something. Before, I think dividing the word of truth is morality. But it does not come close to that at all. It does not come close to that. It's for us to understand the scripture in the view of God's point and man's point or knowing the law and the grace of God. That's the focus of dividing the word of truth. Do you understand? That's the focus of dividing the word of truth. So we should, we should really understand that God had never regretted procreating but because he had man in his plan man in his agenda man is the focus somebody will say that god god lives in heaven where so if god lives in heaven where was he when he created heaven and earth look at something the book of genesis chapter one Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Look at it. He said, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Let's read together. Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So guys, 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 we should not even stretch this. He said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So where was he that he created the heavens and the earth? Because where he is, he is still there. Because he's unchangeable. He does not change. This is what we have to be clear. He does not change his character. He character does not change. He is a loving God. He he is he, he loved to a, to a, to a extent that he even loved the unthankful, the wicked. Do you think God loves you because you are living good? No. Even came for those who are living bad. His love is towards those who are living bad. Yes, I'm telling you. His love is towards those who are living bad. And th there are more to this. There are more to this. And trust me, I, I, I'm going to pause here. Then tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to continue in dealing with this. God, did God really regret it creating man? This is part one. We will continue this episode. As we're going to continue this episode. And God bless you for 
was staying online to listen to me my email is on the screen that's my name email is i had um, attached my name you can email me any question that you think and i'll answer you i'll gladly answer you god bless you i pray for you i pray for you in the name of jesus that the revelation of our lord jesus will continue to be be enlightened on you and jesus the divine god that has revealed himself in you will continue to pop up in you come to bear in your life that in every area in every area of your life he will show forth he will show forth and people will see the glory that is in you god bless you and increase in all that you do in the name of jesus christ amen and amen see you again